Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the M1 Mac and why you shouldn't buy one if you want to game. It has now been 7 months since the release of the M1 and I've recorded over 250 game benchmark videos. What I can say is this, the new ARM chips that Apple produced are extremely impressive and it's leaps and bounds more powerful and more efficient than the Intel Macs of the past. However, this does not suddenly make the M1 Mac a gaming machine, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend the M1 for most gamers, except for a few circumstances which I'll talk about later in this video. So without further ado, let me give you a breakdown of my reasons why I think the M1 is not for most gamers. So the first thing I want to mention is that I do think the M1 itself is capable of very impressive gaming when the games are actually compatible. For example, the recent Metro Exodus optimized port runs extremely impressively at 1080p medium settings at a respectable 40 frames per second. This is very impressive for an Intel coded AAA game first released just over a year ago running on a fanless 10 watt computer. However, these types of ports are the exception rather than the rule. It's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. There aren't enough gamers on macOS and therefore developers won't make macOS games, but there aren't enough games to attract those gamers in the first place. The thing is that if a game comes out for the Windows PC, then you're going to be very lucky to get a macOS port. This is reflected in storefronts like Steam. You'll see that there are 53,772 Windows games at the time of recording, but there are only 12,856 macOS games on Steam. If we also consider the top 20 currently played games on Steam, only 6 out of 20 actually have macOS ports. I will also say that it's possible to play another four of these Windows games actually under crossover or parallels on the M1 Mac, but I'll come to this later in the video. Furthermore, games that should work just fine on macOS have not been receiving the most recent updates. For example, Fortnite technically works great on the M1, but its latest multiplayer season is not in sync with the multiplayer on the Windows and console versions of the game. Therefore, if you game on macOS, you'll be playing a very out of date version of this game. Apple has made it a point to remove support for older standards which make older games in the already small macOS gaming library incompatible. For example, Apple dropped support for OpenGL when macOS Mojave was released in 2018 in favour of its own Metal Graphics API, and has refused to support other open source alternatives like Vulkan. This has made many games incompatible. Rocket League worked great on Mac, however developers eventually decided to drop support. They said that the reasons included Apple dropping support for OpenGL and the fact that macOS and Linux combined only represented 0.3% of the active player base. It's still possible to play this game on the M1, but to play multiplayer with the majority of the player base, the Windows game has to be played through crossover or parallels. Another example is when Catalina, the macOS operating system update, was released in 2019. This removed support for all 32-bit applications. This has resulted in thousands of Mac games that may have had a 32-bit macOS port, but were now incompatible with any new update, and crucially with the M1 Mac. Many games have remained 32-bit and therefore unplayable, however some developers have updated their macOS games more recently, for example the popular multiplayer game Brawlhalla. So you can see that there are various issues with the backwards compatibility of the macOS operating system, especially when it comes to games. However, this might be forgivable if we actually had some proper Windows support, which historically on Intel Macs has been excellent via Bootcamp. However, Bootcamp isn't likely to come to M1 Macs. I've also made a video about this and you can find a link to it in the description to find that video. Realistically, we won't see Bootcamp support on the M1, so therefore we'll have to rely on compatibility layers and virtualization to play Windows games. After benchmarking hundreds of these games, I can say that what the M1 can achieve with Windows games is extremely impressive as a technical achievement. However, it is far from simple and many games do not work. If you'd like to know more, you can see the links in the description for tutorials for crossover and parallels. The reality is that Windows gaming on the M1 Mac is far from ideal or simple for gamers, often requiring quite complex workarounds and some frustration too. For example, if you wanted to play, say, Grand Theft Auto 5 on the M1, then be prepared to do a lot of work to get it running. However, if you do put in the time, the results can be very good if you're prepared to do a lot of tweaking. This could also be applied to other Steam Top 20 titles, for example, Warframe, Payday 2, and Team Fortress 2, which all work using Windows 10 ARM running through parallels. If you'd like to learn more about this, please follow the link in the description. So far, I've been quite negative. However, I actually do think there are some real positives where the M1 Mac shines for gaming. So despite all the issues I've described so far, one thing that has been extremely impressive is Rosetta 2, which is Apple's impressive translation layer, which quickly translates x86 Intel code into Apple Silicon ARM instructions seamlessly. This has meant an extremely smooth transition for most users, to the point that many of the normal Mac users I have spoken to have no idea that there is even a different chipset in the new M1 Mac. 
Virtually all games that are 64-bit that run on macOS work perfectly on the M1, and that includes titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is an Intel title that has been translated on the fly to the ARM chip and runs very well. Furthermore, a handful of games have been ported to Apple Silicon, which means they don't use any of the Intel Rosetta 2 code, and they perform faster and use less power. There are a few high-profile examples, including World of Warcraft, Gwent, Beyond a Steel Sky, and Disco Elysium, and you can find a full list on Apple Gaming Wiki website. These native ARM games represent some of the very best ways to play the game, perhaps best in class. For example, World of Warcraft was one of the very first games to receive a native M1 port, and I think that the MacBook Air, for example, represents quite possibly the best way to play the game on the go. This is thanks to the fact that the MacBook Air runs at only 10 watts, is light, and has an excellent battery life, and is much lighter than an equivalent Windows laptop. More native ARM games are getting ported too. For example, Baldur's Gate 3 is about to receive its M1 native port, and it probably represents the best way to play this game portably. Furthermore, the M1 is an emulation powerhouse, with more and more big name emulators coming on board, including native ARM versions of PPSSPP for the Sony PlayStation Portable, for playing games like God of War, Chains of Olympus, Tekken 6, and also games like Persona 3. You can also play a native ARM version of Dolphin for playing GameCube and Wii games like Mario Kart. And there is also a native ARM RetroArch emulation front end. And I'll be making a video about this in the future. These emulators provide extremely fast performance per watt for the games that they can play. And it's strange to think, but macOS does actually have some exclusive games which you won't be able to find on Windows or on console, which have been brought to the platform through the Apple Arcade subscription service. For example, World of Demons is available as a native M1 Mac game by developer Platinum, who also made the game Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, Bayonetta, and also Nier Automata. There are other exclusive games like Fantasian, which is produced by Hironobu Sakaguchi, who is best known for being the creator of Final Fantasy, and its music is by the famous Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu. Now the question of whether this can truly be considered an exclusive is debatable, especially as Apple Arcade games can also be played on the iPhone, iPad and Apple TV. However, these games do play well on the Mac, and they do have keyboard and mouse support, as well as controller support as well, and they represent excellent value for money for what is now a large range of what I'd call AA quality games. So the main point I'm trying to make in this video is that M1 Macs are not for everyone. They can be very capable gaming machines only if the games you want to play are compatible, if you had an M1 Mac, you would need to accept that some games are just never going to work on the M1. For example, a competitive game like Valorant, or the later season of Fortnite. The important thing is to check that the games you want to play are compatible, so it's a good idea to cross-reference Apple Gaming Wiki and see if your game can be played natively through Rosetta, or through Crossover or Parallels. As long as you are happy with the limited number of playable games, then you'll be happy with the M1 Mac as a gaming machine. Personally for me, I'm not really concerned by the lack of games available for the M1. This is because I fall into the category of people that use my M1 as a secondary gaming device. Most people have a Mac because it's required for some kind of work or artistic endeavor. However, because I know I have a gaming PC at home, therefore I'm satisfied that my M1 Mac has a limited number of compatible games. After all, there are only a limited number of hours in a day. And if I'm stuck with my Mac, I know I can fire up Metro Exodus or The Sims 4 and still have a great gaming experience. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any thoughts or counterpoints to what I've said, please leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.